Roy Manning, uh, as she stated, uh, outside linebackers, uh, assistant head coach for defense. Uh, really excited to be here. Um, have some familiarity, obviously, in the Pac-12 at uh, two other schools, uh, but couldn't be more ecstatic to be here. Um, father, uh, two little ones, twins. Uh, they were actually born here in Los Angeles. Uh, so this is a special place to me. And uh, just looking forward to get going, working with uh, our players and this program and getting this thing going in the right direction. So. Uh, it's been great. Had the opportunity to meet Alex uh, uh, six or seven years ago uh, when he took over at uh, Washington State. Um, and from the day I met him, I uh, knew a few things about him that he was uh, highly driven, highly motivated, um, is, is wired, what I would say, the right way in terms of a, a person uh, that players would want to uh, be led by or gravitate towards and um, really have hit it off since then. And, being able to uh, implement this defense now. This would be our third stop. So extremely comfortable um, with Alex and, and with the, uh, the schematics and, and so forth and so on of the uh, defense. And uh, again, just looking forward to uh, getting that to our players and getting them up to speed uh, so they can also you know, have that shared vision with uh, what we expect when they hit the field. Sure, uh, and that's a great question. Um, I know people are probably wondering that. Um, at Washington State, my title was outside backers um, just alone, but I coached the nickels and the rushes, which are two different positions. But schematically, uh, the structure of the defense was a 3-4, and so a lot of the things that they did, although different positions, there was a lot of carryover uh, as it relates to the coverage aspects of things. And so um, what that inevitably allowed me to do was be able to transition, as you know, the last few years uh, into coaching in the secondary as well, having that background. Um, now here, uh, we've obviously the defense has evolved um, as the years have gone on and, and the different things uh, we do with certain positions and all the, the ins and outs of that. I won't bore you with that, but the point is the point. I've had the, uh, the, the luxury to coach three different positions in this defense. And so just very familiar with the front and the back end. And so as we work out and figure out who will fit where and what's the best way um, to approach uh, this current roster uh, and, and how that fits into what we're going to be able to do schematically, we'll iron out specifically what players uh, will be with what coach and, and things of that nature. But um, Confident, uh, just like in every stop, that uh, we'll make sure that each one of those positions are being uh, uh, coached uh, hard and, and, and that they have um, the expectation of the standard that, that aligns with ours. Um, now, um, I'm looking forward to obviously getting back more into the front, like we talked about with uh, outside backers, uh, specifically it's the position I played. Um, but again, we'll, we'll iron out all the details uh, with the players and uh, as we continue to move through, you know, this spring, and who exactly will be um, working with what position. But um, you got to know it all. That's one thing I know in this profession. So. Yeah. Nicholas, drummer, TCU, football.com, 24-7 sports. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, the biggest difference is just 
obviously it's not a unique thing to, to be a, a nickel defense in today's game, right? So everybody, uh, very rarely do you find teams that play with three linebackers uh, in the box, you know what I mean? And so um, we've had to evolve as, as offenses has, have evolved and continue to uh, challenge you to make plays in space and spread you out and use tempo and things of that nature. And so, again, you know, more of it is specific to schematically, whether you're going to be a uh, middle open team or a single high team, you know, what coverages and things you use, um, that, that directly affects how you play that overhang guy. That nickel, um, again, you can call him what you want, outside backer, nickel, you know what I mean? But the point is, huh? What do you guys call him? We, we call him a nickel. We call him a nickel because body type wise, he would be considered more of a secondary guy out of that corner safety mold. Um, to play that nickel spot. But again, if you play a certain team, you may want to sub a bigger nickel or bigger body into that position, which typically hasn't been the case uh, as of late, just because of most offenses are heavy, 11 personnel, 10 personnel, where they're only using one tight end. And even in that uh, circumstance, that tight end is an athletic receiving type of threat. But uh, again, our, our big thing defensively is we want to be adaptable. Uh, to whatever we're getting and not be pigeonholed into uh, being out personnel or out uh, packaged by a team. And so there are uh, a lot of carryover uh, to playing the positions in this defense. I'm sure you spoke with Alex. Our safeties have to know nickel, our nickels have to know corners and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and so we do that again uh, so it can always, uh, in, in our mind, be advantage defense. Yeah, I was a hater, man. I, you know what I, and again, when you think of uh, you know the landscape um, of college football and where each and every team is situated, and and again having this experience in the Pac-12 helped me understand that the Pac-12, uh, predominantly the schools are in, in large markets. You know, if you compare that to the rest of college football, uh, that's that's literally the opposite, where most college programs. Uh, with some exceptions, are in small markets, small towns. Um, and so, you know, the thought is, um, you know, when I've been at other places, hey, USC, you know, you're, you're in this major, major uh, you know, market, this major city, this hustle and bustle, and you know what I mean? Just a, a mess of a city, so to speak. And then you get here, and it's really uh, pretty neat uh, how this campus sits uh, near downtown, but it's not a downtown feel, you know what I mean? What they've done with this campus, obviously USC Village is, is one of the most unique setups, I'd say in college football anywhere, um, you know, where you think you're hopping on buses or using public transportation. I mean, you literally, uh, you, you're doing quite the opposite. It's skateboards and uh, what are those things called? Uh, scooters and things like that. And really, uh, you don't have to use those to get around. So I've been, uh, pleasantly surprised, and uh, again, I think it's an advantage for us uh, now being, I guess, on the inside and on this side of things, seeing it. So, um, but you know, you're always going to have that in recruiting, where everybody's going to try to um, look for things um, where I look at it or we look at it as a positive to be in a market like this, where people um, may try to use those negative things against you. But uh, it'd, be, it'd be a hard. Uh, thing to try to beat once someone actually gets here and they see it like, okay, this is legit. This is a good deal here. So. Uh, one thing it does is, is you can't uh, cut ties with, with, with recruits now in terms of, you know, the days of, um, you know, signing day and you don't get the guy you want, you know, you, you go on Twitter, you unfollow him, all those things, and you move on, wish him luck, whatever it is, but, you know, you kind of lay that relationship, so to speak, to rest, and now just knowing the potential with the portal, you could uh, have the same kid in a year or two down the line. That, that has to change that recruiting process for you. Um, 
you know, in the interim or whatever it is. So I think that's a difference. I think that um, you have to obviously, as you're evaluating high school kids, you have to compare them or, you know, stand them up next to not just high school kids in their class, but now, you know, a transfer guy that you could get in the portal, you know, is this kid in this 2023 20, class, you know, will he be better than a guy that I can get a year from now or two years from now in the portal? That's a real question. And again, not to speak for anybody else, but the chances are he's probably not because those guys that are in the portal are going to have a year of college experience, whether that's maturity, whether that's a physical development, you know what I mean? And again, it doesn't probably affect that top cut or that top whatever that number is of high school uh, prospects, but some of those guys that's on the line or you know that next tier of guys, obviously we're, we're all seeing it. It probably can affect their, their options uh, as it has like with the junior college. So I just think you just have to be way more aware in the recruiting process. You gotta uh, vet them more and you have to um, make sure that the kid you do sign, particularly if he's out of high school, he better be a good one. Otherwise, you're going to want to out-recruit him. No, that's a great question, and, and it's exactly uh, uh, just that. And again, I don't think it's a secret, but you know, our recruiting profile is 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 recruit guys that can do multiple things. Uh, you know, you won't find us recruiting a safety that looks like me. Um, that you say, hey, if, if it doesn't work out as safety, he'll be a linebacker. Well, we don't want to recruit that guy, to be honest with you, because again, what you're really saying is he's probably a safety that can't run very well. Right, and so again, we we have been in our past just very uh, cognizant of recruiting guys that fit the profile to say, okay, this guy uh, can be a safety, a nickel, or a corner, and that's just based on you know what does he do best, as opposed to what he's uh, limited you know enough to do or, or can't do. Um, and again, to your point, the majority of college football is ten and eleven personnel, uh, and so as you've seen the last. I guess five, six, eight years, you've seen those bigger safeties now be linebackers. You've seen those bigger linebackers now be edge guys, and not just in college football, but also in the NFL. You've seen that the shift of body types and where you play guys is completely different. Uh, with a guy like Taylor Mays, man, be, that's that's a that's a unicorn right there. That's the exception, right? And so, yeah, we we have evolved that way, and um, I think that's important. I think that's important. Last one, Mike. Coach, going back to your uh, days of hating USC, uh, when you were recruiting, uh, obviously USC is in a big city. You were recruiting to smaller markets sometimes. How do you compare discipline coaching at a place like USC to maybe a smaller college environment school? That's a great question. And again, I don't, I don't hate USC. I've always had a huge respect for USC, actually. Uh, uh, played in a couple Rose Bowls in college and had the opportunity to practice in the Coliseum one year, which was a weird deal since we were playing USC. But um, I think that th there's challenges on both sides. I think that the initial thought is, hey, how am I going to keep a kid focused uh, in a city this massive, uh, in a place where so many moving parts are going on, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think the natural thought is it, it'd be harder to do that. But, um, you know, having been in, you know, the exact opposite type of market, I think there's challenges on both sides. You know, sometimes when there's not a lot to do, that means you look for more things to get into. You know what I mean? You find yourselves getting into more trouble uh, sometimes in, you know, what you would think is a smaller market. Obviously, um, eyes are always on you as a college uh, athlete. But, um, you know, I think that in a smaller market, um, you, you can't do anything without someone seeing you, uh, ex you know, or 
you know, you, you, you stick out like a sore thumb. Where I think the advantage of being in a larger market like this is you can separate from being the, the oh, he must play football uh, stereotype when you walk around a town, when you go out to eat with your friends, like I'm sure our players do in this great city. They can just be who they are, right, without having to always feel those eyes on them, even though they may be. So I think uh, it's an advantage uh, to be in a market like this. Um, and so I'd use that in recruitment against anyone that would uh, say the opposite. So hope that answers your question. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate Thank you so much. Fight on. Thanks, bro. Yep.